Hello everyone! My name is Gandolin, and welcome to another World of Warcraft guide. Today I wanted to try something a little bit different, and do a patch guide for all the content and changes that are on their way. So here is everything you need to know about Patch 7.3, Shadows of Argus. As announced at Gamescom 2017, Patch 7.3 will launch with each region's maintenance on the week of August 29th. As you may have noticed, the Legion homeworld of Argus looms in Azeroth's sky after the events at the Tomb of Sargeras led to a portal being opened between our planets. This has given us the opportunity to take the fight to the Legion and end their burning crusade once and for all. Let's start off with the world and story content. The patch begins with players boarding a Draenei ship called the Vindicar and traveling to Argus. When you arrive, you will find three new zones to explore. Krokun, the Antoran Wastes, and Makari. They all have new stories, rare mobs, treasures, and world quests, as well as a bunch of cutscenes and cinematics. Flying is not allowed on Argus, but you will be able to deploy a series of teleport beacons that allow instantaneous travel to and from the Vindicar. These will serve as the equivalent of flight points on Argus. The content of Patch 7.3 is staggered over the first three weeks. So on week one, you will only be able to access Krokun and the Antoran Wastes. These zones cover the first two chapters of the Argus storyline. On week two, Makari will open up, including chapters three and four of the storyline. Invasion points will also become available at this time. More on those in a second. Finally, on week three, the last story chapter in Makari will open up, along with the new dungeon and the Netherlight Crucible both of which I'll discuss later in the video. Back to invasion points. Argus is the home base of the Legion, so there are many portals to other worlds throughout the cosmos that are also under attack. Players can enter these portals and stop the Legion from causing any more destruction. Regular invasion points can be entered by small groups of 3 to 10 players. There are also greater invasion points, which are home to the world bosses of Argus. Obviously, these will require a raid group to defeat, and they will drop eye level 930 gear. Once you've unlocked invasion points, you will be able to see them on your world map. Now let's look at the instance content. First is the new dungeon, the Seat of the Triumvirate, which will be available starting week 3. This dungeon will see players visit the location from which Velen, Archimonde, and Kil'jaeden ruled the ancient Eridar society before the coming of the Legion. This dungeon will be available on Heroic, Mythic, and Mythic Plus difficulties. As with previous major patches, the item level of loot dropped from dungeons will be increasing again. Normal Mode will drop eye level 845 gear, Heroic will drop 865, and Mythic will drop 885. Mythic Plus rewards will scale up to 915 in the dungeon and 935 in the weekly chest, capped at Mythic level 10. This will increase to level 15 at a later date. The difficulty of Heroic and Mythic Dungeons will also increase, while Normal remains the same. Then we have the new raid, which is called Antorus the Burning Throne. There will be 11 bosses, and this raid will conclude the majority of the Legion storyline. As with other raids this expansion, it will not be available when the patch launches. It will release at a later date with patch 7.3.5, which could come out sometime in mid-November. If Blizzard keeps up their 11-week patch cycle, then it should open up on November 14th. Now on to reputation changes. When you reach Argus on week one, you will meet two new factions, the Argusian Reach and the Army of the Light. They each have unique rewards that you can unlock as you progress through the reputation, including several mounts. They also will be added to the World Quest Emissary rotation along with the Armies of Legion fall from patch 7.2. There are also a few BOA rep catch-up items that are being added to the game. I'm planning on doing a rep review of the new factions to cover all the details shortly after 7.3 launches. Next, let's talk about class changes. Many classes are receiving updates in this patch, with Frost Death Knights and Feral Druids getting the biggest changes. I'll put a link in the description to WoWhead's list of changes so you can see all the details for your class and spec. Another super exciting change is that Blizzard has finally implemented updated caster animations. 
You might recall that Melee Specs received updated animations at the launch of the expansion. This time, they have updated all three Mage and Priest Specs, along with Elemental and Resto Shamans, as well as some tweaks to Resto Druids. There are still a few specs that are coming down the line and will be released in the future, so don't worry if yours hasn't been updated yet. Now let's look at the changes to artifacts and their associated systems. First, we have a change to how artifact knowledge works. The cap is being increased to 55, but instead of placing work orders, all level 110 characters will passively gain a new level each week. So on week 1, everyone will have knowledge level 41, on week 2, everyone will have knowledge level 42, and so on. It's also worth noting that the artifact power multiplier from these new levels is a big jump from level 40. Second, we have a change to how you unlock certain artifact tints. This applies to hidden and challenge appearances. Previously, after unlocking those base forms, you had to use the appearance to unlock the successive tints. For example, you had to complete 30 Legion dungeons using your hidden appearance. This is no longer the case. If you have unlocked the base form, you no longer need to use the appearance as you work toward unlocking the different tints. So if you unlock your challenge appearance, you wouldn't need to have it equipped to unlock the tint for killing heroic Kill Jaden. Next, we have a change to artifacts themselves. Players no longer have to unlock the third relic slot or the new traits leading to concordance. Artifacts will automatically have these unlocked when you reach level 110. Finally, let's talk about the Netherlight Crucible. This is a new system that will unlock in week 3 of the patch. It will allow you to upgrade and customize your artifact relics. When you plug a relic into the Crucible, you will see an advancement tree. The first two tiers are passive effects, while the final tier gives you a choice of a second trait to add to your relic. The three options are randomly generated, but you're guaranteed not to get the same trait twice, or the same trait the relic already has. This new system has the potential to let you add a strong trait to a relic with a weak trait. The Crucible will work on relics you've received before patch 7.3, so save relics with comparable eye levels until you see what traits they can get. Unlocking the different tiers depends on the level of your artifact, so keep putting points into concordance. The new knowledge levels will help with this. Let's move on to gear changes. There are new kinds of catch-up gear items that you can buy from Thaumaturge Vashreen, the ethereal that sold relinquished tokens on the Broken Shore. He is now on the Vindicar and sells a new form of Relinquished Tokens for each armor slot and relic type that award eye level 910 loot. They are purchased using Veiled Argonite, a new currency that can be found on Argus. There are also a new version of the Dauntless Tokens called Unsullied Tokens, which create eye level 880 gear. They are found on Argus but don't appear to be purchasable. However, these unsullied tokens are BOA, so you can send them to your alts. Nether shards will not be used in 7.3, so don't bother stockpiling them. When the Antorus raid opens in patch 7.3.5, tier 21 armor sets will become available, along with the rest of the raid gear, all of which will be eye level 930 on normal difficulty. You can check out the wowhead link in the description to see what they look like and what the set bonuses are. Also available from Entorus will be a new Legendary Ring, which will increase the power of the effects you add to your relics via the Netherlight Crucible. Now let's talk about professions. With a new world comes new resources, and pretty much every profession is taking advantage of it. Mining, herbalism, leatherworking, and tailoring all have a new crafting material. Jewel crafting also has new epic gems for each color. And there are also new versions of Obliterum and Blood of Sargeras, called Primal Obliterum and Primal Sargerite, respectively. Crafting professions can also make new gear, which can be upgraded to eye level 935 using Primal Obliterum. All the crafting professions also have new recipes. There's another Wowhead link down below for you to check out all the details. Next up, we have Order Halls. There are a few new types of troops that you can recruit. 
They are very powerful and are designed around the new Argus missions. These troops are quite a bit more expensive than the ones we've had so far, so you may want to save up on some order resources. There are also new pieces of follower equipment, including some new legendary equipment. Additionally, the item level cap for your champions is increasing to 950. Armor sets that you've acquired prior to patch 7.3 will only be good up to 900, just like when patch 7.2 launched, so don't save them up. Instead, there are new armor sets that will increase your champion's eye level to 900, 925, or 950, similar to how Warlords of Draenor armor sets worked. Finally, they've made some changes to the Order Hall Advancement Tree, reducing the cost of several upgrades, and reducing the time it takes to change a bonus. When 7.3 launches, a new PvP season will begin. This brings with it new prestige levels, new gear, and new rewards. There are also a few specific class changes that you can check out in the official patch notes. Check the description box for a link. Finally, let's look at the changes to the collection systems. For Transmog, several new armor sets and weapon appearances have been added, including lots of Army of the Light themed looks. The dressing room has also been updated to be larger, and now comes with class-specific backgrounds. Many new battle pets are available on Argus, as well as new legendary boss pets to fight. They've also added the next chapter in the Raiding with Leashes achievements. Cuticlism adds 16 battle pets to the Cataclysm raids. Finally, there are many new mounts to collect. Both reputations have mounts you can purchase. Four mounts come from the upcoming raid. There is a new Zeppelin mount from the Darkmoon Fair, and there are many others. And there you have it. That's everything you need to know about Patch 7.3, Shadows of Argus. Personally, I am really looking forward to this one. Everything looks amazing, and I can't wait to see the story. I hope you're as excited as I am. And that's it for this video. If this guide helped you, leave a comment down below and give it a big thumbs up. Share this video with your friends, and let me know if there's something you need help with. Check out the description box for links to follow me on social media, and of course, subscribe to see all of my future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.